Are you a stationary geek? You know, where you get pens and papers and journals and all that sort of stuff? I know I am. So back to school is a time where I get super excited because I can, you know, justify or make an excuse to go out and buy some new pens and papers and stuff like that. Well, one of the things that we often see on our list of things that we absolutely need, we better go out and get, is a more powerful computer. And it could be that you're transitioning from one type of school to another, junior high to high school or high school to university, college, whatever it may be. And you're thinking, you know what? I need to go out and buy a new, more powerful computer, something that I can use for school. Well, before you do that, maybe take a look at this video because I'm going to look at five reasons why you might not need to go out and buy a more powerful computer for school. Reason number five, most learning does not require a powerful computer. I use computers such as the Raspberry Pi 400. I have videos here on the channel where I talk about this particular computer or Raspberry Pi 4. Now, these are not particularly powerful computers in the traditional sense. You're not going to use this to play a high-end video game. You're not going to use this for a lot of video processing and such. But this computer actually is useful for probably 95 to 99% of any type of learning that the average student does. What do you actually do when you're learning? A lot of times you're researching on the internet, you're working with documents in order to prepare papers, and a powerful computer can actually be more of a distraction than a benefit. Because if you've got a powerful computer and you've installed some pretty exciting video games on there, schoolwork might take a back seat. So you don't need a powerful computer and most learning does not require a powerful computer. Reason number four, a lot of the apps we use can be run directly off the internet. So the classic applications that we might use in an academic environment would be Google Docs or Microsoft Office. And the Google suite of products has always been web-based. You just use a browser to connect up to the cloud service and you use those documents, you use the spreadsheets and use all the tools that they have directly through that web interface. Microsoft Office is the same way. Word, PowerPoint, Excel, a lot of different applications can all be run through a web browser. You don't need a computer in order to install those programs. And in fact, the web-based versions have really caught up to what used to be the ones that we installed on a computer. So there's very little difference between the two. The ones on the web are, are really full featured and very powerful, especially with Microsoft Office. That's the one that I use the most. Your school may even have free access for you to go and use those applications and get free storage, for example, Microsoft OneDrive. They are even more convenient in many cases than having them installed on your computer because now I could be in a computer lab, I could be in a classroom, I could be at a friend's house. I don't have to worry about having my computer with me. All I have to do is I have to go onto the internet, log into my account and all my documents are there. I can collaborate with other team members. I can do whatever it is that I need. And I don't have to carry around a little USB key or some external hard drive either to have my files with me. Reason number three is a lot like reason number four, but with other types of applications. So what's happened is we now live in an ecosystem in a world where a lot of the software we use runs as what we call software as a service, sometimes abbreviated, abbreviated as SAAS, software as a service. And software as a service means that the applications are all running off a central cloud service, could be running off Amazon Web Services, could be running off Microsoft Azure, could be running off an IBM Cloud, Google Cloud, whatever it might be. And when it's running in those services, the developer of that application is able to do a global update so that all of their customers are updated with the latest version without having to convince the customers to install the latest security patch or to install the latest version of the code. What this means is that those web versions of the software as a service are the most up-to-date versions. And there are different applications for all types of learning. One application company that I really like is called Simulation Curriculum. They have astronomy simulation software. They have earth sciences simulation software. And that's just something that I enjoy learning about in my spare time. So I just go to the simulation curriculum website and I can learn about those topics without having to install astronomy software on my computer or earth science software on my computer. And the same type of software exists for business, for um, any type of life sciences, mathematics, physics. Very, very useful software as a service. Reason number two. You can run a lot of your own software by renting or using a cloud-based virtual machine. 
Now this applies more to people that might be doing development work or people that need a highly specialized or configured system that meets their needs. Instead of having to buy a powerful computer, configure it, and then run the risk of losing that computer through theft or damage, you can just build that virtual machine in the cloud. Plus, you don't have to pay for that virtual machine in the cloud when you're not using it. You can delete the resources and you're not consuming any of the resources from the cloud, therefore you're not paying any money. Now, I know that Microsoft, for example, and Amazon Web Services as well, have a very generous program where they give away a ton of free services that are always free. Then they even have credits for students where they can get 12 months worth of services or they can get some credits that they can apply to the services. So again, check with your school to see if they have any sort of uh, understanding with Amazon Web Services or Azure for Education to see if you qualify for some of those benefits. But even if you don't, renting in the cloud for a short period of time can be more economical than going out and buying a powerful computer. Now, when it comes to using cloud systems and cloud PCs, you sort of have to look at what your user profile looks like. So if you're doing something where you're just running a lab, running an experiment, then what you want to do is you want to allocate the appropriate amount of resources and be careful not to over allocate. You know, have, you know, just because you can build a machine with 30 processors doesn't mean you need a machine with 30 processors. So be a little judicious on how you configure that machine so that you don't burn through your credits or you don't make your credit card blow up on you. But you can get a very nice machine and it might cost three or four dollars an hour, but if you only use it for 10 hours a week, that's 30, 40 dollars a week. That might even be an extreme amount of money. It might be something where you're only using it for two or three hours to run some specific experiments. Plus, don't forget all the free services that are there as well. So that's where you're renting a computer for a specific purpose or you're building an environment for a specific purpose. Now, the other thing we can do is we can have a machine in the cloud through Windows 365, which shouldn't be confused with Microsoft 365, but Windows 365 is a permanent machine that lives in the cloud. And what we can do is we pay a monthly fee for that machine. And then what we can do is we install software on that machine, maybe software that's not available uh, as SAAS software. Maybe it's a piece of software that's unique to a program. And I can install it on that cloud-based permanent machine. And then I can access it throughout an entire semester. I'm running one right now. It's about $40 a month in order to have that particular machine, but it's a lot cheaper and I have less maintenance than if I had a personal computer. I don't have to worry about theft. I don't have to worry about breakage. Plus, again, I have the flexibility that I don't have to carry anything with me. I can just show up in a classroom. I can show up at a friend's house. They have some internet connection. I can connect up to that machine. And in fact, I have videos here on the channel where I show you how I could use my phone or an iPad to connect up to that virtual machine and run Windows on an iPad or run Windows on my phone. And with that, I might want to buy some accessories like a keyboard or something or even a bigger screen that might make plugging my mobile device or plugging my internet connected device into there a little bit better. I have videos on that. The point being is that I don't have to buy a powerful new computer. I can just rent either a persistent machine or I can rent a temporary machine on a internet-based service. Now there is also a third thing that can happen when we come to uh, using cloud virtual machines and that is lab environments. So I teach a lot of technical topics and in those technical topics there's a couple of companies that I've worked with uh, and what they'll do, Extreme Labs would be one of those companies and uh, Skillable is another one of those companies and what they do is they build complete lab environments in the cloud and then I can give my students access to those complete lab environments. So I don't have to have labs in the classroom. I don't have to get students to configure a bunch of local virtual machines. I don't have to get students to modify their own personal computers or devices. They don't have to go and buy a new powerful computer. So the thir second reason why we might not need to buy a new computer for, for school is because a lot of things are provided to us through cloud virtual machines. And the number one reason why you don't need to buy a new computer for school is you already have one. 
If you're watching this video, chances are you have an internet connected device. Otherwise, I don't really know how you're watching this video, unless you're at a friend's house or something along those lines. But if you're using your phone right now to watch this video, or if you're using a tablet like an iPad or a, or a Samsung Android tablet, or some sort of device, or if you're using an older computer that has an internet connection, then you have everything you need to take advantage of the things I talked about in the other four reasons. You can run software as a service. You can run Microsoft Office or Google Docs. You can access and work with cloud-based systems. You can do all of that and you can accomplish the things you need to learn in school that don't require a powerful computer. Now, if your circumstance is such that you don't have a very good computer or any computer at all, maybe consider something like the Raspberry Pi 400 or even a Raspberry Pi if you have a keyboard and a monitor and a mouse already. Or maybe consider using your mobile device such as your phone, maybe getting a screen for your phone that's a little bit larger. I have videos here on the channel where I talk about using your phone as a laptop or using your, your tablet device uh, to run Windows. So I have a number of resources here on the channel. If you like resources like that, you can subscribe to the channel. If this video was useful for you can go ahead and hit the like and subscribe and do all that sort of good stuff and there are reasons why you might want to get a powerful computer but that's not this video this video is why you don't need a new powerful computer for school so comment down below on why you think you could use your existing systems or why you think you could avoid the expense of having to buy a new computer if you have reasons why you need to buy a new computer, well, that's a different video. Maybe I'll make that one. Comment down below if you'd like me to give you five or six reasons why you should buy a new powerful computer for school. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really glad you came here. I'm really glad that you watched the video and we'll see you in the next one.